Hey, I'm Brent from Gray House Studio, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this dust collector using the Super Dust Deputy XL. I reached out to Oneida Air uh, to ask them some questions about the six-inch inlet and outlet on their XL model, and they were kind enough to send me this Cyclone to test out. I'm also going to incorporate the Dust Sentry, which is just a uh, fancy word for uh, Oneida's sensor to tell you when the barrel is full so that way it won't clog up and I'm not realizing it breathing in a ton of dust so I'll show you how I made this. I started my dust collector build with a stock Harbor Freight dust collector. Out of the box it pulls about 33 meters per second of air through the 5 inch port. I want the inlet of the blower to be 6 inches. To support this I need to upgrade the impeller so I remove the stock impeller with the puller tool. Then I replaced it with the 12 inch impeller. You'll notice the blades are shaped a little differently on the larger impeller and that design actually provides a more consistent performance. After using a mallet to drive the impeller onto the shaft and reattaching the cover, I took another reading and was happy to see that the increase from 33 meters per second to 40 meters per second. To widen the inlet of the blower I used a 6 inch air duct collar and cut a hole with a sheet metal blade on a jigsaw. The collar comes with an adhesive foam tape, so I removed the tape and stuck it to the metal cover. With the collar attached, it made it easy to drill out the mounting holes and secure the inlet collar with rivets. I use rivets because the clearance between the case and the impeller is too tight for screws. With the blower modified, I made a wall mount out of 2x4s. The mount was a really simple design with a rectangle support extending from the wall that surrounds the intake. To mount the brace to the wall, I attached a 2x4 to the wall studs with 3 inch decking screws. Then using the same type of screws, I attached the rectangular brace to the 2x4 secured to the wall. To help support the weight of the blower, I added a second horizontal lower brace on the wall and connected it to the top brace with a diagonal brace. To test it out, I did a couple of pull ups before hanging the blower. To allow me to connect a large cylinder filter to the outlet, I added a square of plywood to a duct transition and then mounted it to the blower with half inch screws. Before mounting the filter I needed to open up the bottom so I cut a 6 inch hole with a jigsaw. Then cut a mounting plate out of sheet metal with a jigsaw to allow me to mount the 6 inch collar to the filter with liquid nails and half inch screws. The filter was held in place to the wall with a simple 2x4 bracket that also attached the wall studs with screws. Then I attached the filter to the bracket through the top with screws. After the blower and filter was hung, it was time to prep the cyclone. I traced the whole location in the cyclone base outline on the top of a 55 gallon barrel lid. Then I used a collar to trace the 6 inch hole, indicating where to cut the hole in the lid for the cyclone. I drilled two holes to allow me to insert the jigsaw blade and then cut out the 6 inch hole with the jigsaw. Then I drilled out all the mounting holes. The cyclone actually came with bolts and a gasket, but I misplaced it, so I used some construction adhesive and large rivets to hold it to the lid, and it worked great. The cyclone was then secured to the blower with half inch screws, and the last thing I added to the dust collector was a bag to collect any particles that made it through the filter. I did this by adding a latch to the bottom of the filter cylinder, and then cut out kind of a donut of plywood that let me put the bag through the center and then I used the latch to temporarily clamp the donut to the filter allowing me to remove the bag and put a new bag in after I cleaned it out. To ensure that everything was airtight, I used metal duct tape on all the joints. To install the dust sentry sensor, I drilled a pilot hole in the lid and then widened it to 3 quarters of an inch to allow the sensor to insert through the top and then it screws secure from below. I screwed the light into the 2x4 bracket on the front of the dust collector using the mounting holes that are in the sides of the dust sentry. To calibrate the sensor, there's a tiny potentiometer in the top of the sensor that you can twist with a flathead screwdriver to adjust the distance that the sensor trips. I haven't had a chance to hook up the permanent 6 inch ducting that will connect the dust collector to the table saw and miter saw, so to test the CFM I'm getting at the end, I went ahead and hooked up a 3 foot section of duct and a 6 inch flex hose that's 10 feet long, so I'll test the CFM to see what I'm getting, and this is a somewhat real scenario um, that will give me a better number than just testing at the inlet of the cyclone. Using a meter I was able to see that the air is moving 19.5 meters per second through the 6 inch flex hose and I used an online calculator to convert the meters per second to CFM and got 753 CFM. 
Thankfully in a comment it was pointed out that the duct radius is half of the duct diameter so the calculator wants the radius not the diameter that's why it says three and not six inches which is what I've been calling the duct. If you enjoyed seeing how I made this dust collector be sure to click the like button below and subscribe to our Greyhouse Studio YouTube channel. Leave us any questions in the comments section below and for additional details on this project check out our blog studiogreyhouse.com.